Moving on now, as the UK moves towards achieving net zero, electric vehicles are at the forefront of decarbonising personal transportation. Tata Motors, owner of Jaguar Land Rover, has pledged a whopping £4 billion investment in an advanced electric car battery factory in Somerset, expected to create 4,000 jobs. And while electric cars are praised for their zero exhaust emissions, their overall environmental impact is still very much under scrutiny. So join me now is motoring journalist, the legend Quentin Wilson, and journalist and author of Not Zero, Ross Clark. Let's start with you, Quentin. So we're constantly nudged towards getting electric vehicles, but the fact of the matter is there's not a great deal of enthusiasm, it would seem. Um, um, the inquiry is a 66% down into them. Just how green are electric cars anyway? Well, I, I think you just need to understand that the best-selling car in the world, not just an electric car, is a Tesla Model Y. So there is huge demand out there. Um, when we're talking about green, uh, look, uh, the, the amount of critical minerals you need to, 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 to produce for a battery every year is about 20 million tonnes extracted. Compared to fossil fuels, 4 billion tonnes of extraction, you know, the whole life of a, an electric car the emissions are, are kind of 70% less than a combustion car. So we need to look at this information we're being presented with, but let's be clear, a biased editorial policy against electric cars uh, and look at the facts really, really carefully because you know you go through these things and, and, and the information there just isn't accurate. OK, Ross Clark, let's cut to you now, because um, uh, earlier this year, Rowan Atkinson said he felt duped into buying an electric car when he looked into the true environmental impact of the extraction of the, the oil for the batteries, the fabrication of electric cars. The environmental impact is not just measuring what comes out the exhaust or what doesn't, it's the actual full creation of the car. Ross, tell us about the environmental impact of electric cars compared to more ordinary cars, please. Yeah. I mean, obviously, where electric cars score is that they don't have exhaust pipes, they don't spew out noxious fumes where they actually use. But um, there's the, the two, two things, um, you know, sources of, of carbon emissions fr from electric cars. Firstly, the electricity. Um, they're only as green as the electricity that is used to produce them. And 40% of our electricity in Britain is still produced with fossil fuels, mostly gas. And while the government's wants to try to remove that fossil fuel by 2035. It's got a very big uphill struggle because um, it cannot tell us how it's going to cope with, you know, a situation where the sun's not shining, the wind's not blowing, and we've got very little wind and solar energy. You know, it is going to be very, very expensive to um, decarbonise the national grid. So, you know, it's likely way beyond 2035 that we'll still be having electricity from fossil fuels and, and that will obviously impact on the, um, you know, the environmental friendliness of electric vehicles. But the, the other problem is, as Quentin did allude to there, is in the manufacture of, um, uh, of electric cars and due, due to the nature of the, the batteries requiring the, these extra um, rare metals, um, it, it, it it takes a, an extra sort of 40, 50 percent carbon emissions involved in the manufacture of an electric car compared with the um, equivalent petrol and diesel car. So, you know, you start on the back foot, as it were. You know, you're going to have to drive a certain number of miles before you can claim that you've cut um, carbon emissions. And that distance can be anywhere between sort of 10,000 miles and 80,000 miles, according to various estimates and, and where you're recharging and so on. So, okay. I want um, to bring, you know, can I bring an electric when you drive 50,000 miles in it, you know, you're quite likely you're actually going to be, you know, creating more okay. carbon emissions over the lifetime of that. Okay, car. thank you, Quentin. I'd like to bring you back in here because, of course, we saw there's an, there's a, um, an upset in Uxbridge over Ulairs. When when it's put to people if they get the chance to to vote on things, or of course they're turning their back on them. Today, the Prime Minister is being urged to turn his back on eco policies, including the outright ban on petrol cars by 2030. Do you think we need a little bit more carrot? and a little bit less stick on changing to EVs. Let's just go back to your point, Ross, about the, 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 the carbon debt. It's 16,500 miles on a European grid and it pays off very, very quickly. And it's much, much, much less than a combustion car. And going on to your, 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 your political point, the newspaper you held up, I mean, they did a story about 
um, uh, potholes and EVs causing potholes and, and cited research by uh, Leeds University. Leeds University have said, hang on a minute, we weren't involved in this. You just lifted some research and made it look like we were. Can we have a retraction? So, look, we're seeing the media trying to influence government political uh, policy on this. And it's really, really wrong that we're being deluged with misinformation that is trying to get politicians to change the direction of travel. And look, Europe is burning. Um, and we've just had a story on your program about the price of fuel being ratcheted up by opportunistic fuel retailers. And you're telling me we're to carry on doing what we've always done and burning what we've always burned. We have to change. And, and, and I know politicians are going to make EVs and net zero and ULES an electoral issue. Um, but there's a, a, a huge body of people out there who are worried about air quality, who are worried about climate and who are worried about the rising costs of energy, which have been weaponized by Russia and Saudi Arabia. OK, Ross, I'm going to have to stop there. Ross Clark, Quentin Wilson, we could talk all day about this, but we have to wrap there. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on GB News Saturday this afternoon. Thank you very much.